And it's just absolutely fundamental to what the voluntary sector, the children and young people's voluntary sector has always been about. We've always been about highlighting the humanity of children, the absolute integral place they have in our society and in our communities. You have to protect certain sections of the population. If they're going to give back to society the most they can. So uh, it's a give and take. If we, want, if we expect a lot from children, and I think we should, because they have a lot to contribute, then we have to protect their basic rights. So I think it's part of that give and take. We have a number of services that deliver children rights and advocacy work actually and so every day you have staff who are really representing and advocating on behalf of mainly looked after children with local authorities so I think we do a lot there's still a lot more to do and you know often really tough decisions are made. One of the things that Home Start's done is it's created a, safe, a specialist safeguarding team which I'm a member of and that's only happened in the last four months and I think that's in response to saying that actually without getting safeguarding right then nothing else we do really matters and that's obviously a direct uh, a direct relationship with the UN Convention because of course one of the rights that children have there is to be safe and be protected from harm and I think that's very much what the safeguarding team within Homestock UK see our role is doing. On the ground day to day engaging with local authorities making sure children's voices are heard that the issues that families and children face are actually you know, not just dealt with as problems, but are seen as part of actually what these uh, statutory organisations have to do. So it's about that day-to-day -day engagement by children uh, with our workers and then our workers with people in the statutory jobs, um, seeking to make those changes, seeking to make the, the convention and the, the rights of the convention a reality. You know, all those things that are being decided currently in terms of policy and legislation, I think we need to think more carefully about how it impacts children and young people. They need to be considered not just as a, a secondary thing, but, you know, at the same time as adults. There's one project that I'm particularly interested in, and that's um, the support for children when families are separating. So all the focus is on supporting the mothers, supporting the fathers. Um, but there isn't a helpline, there isn't anything for the children whose parents are separating. And, and I think that, that, that could only happen, uh, that situation could only arise because of a lack of attention to children's rights. Children's rights are so fundamental to the sort of society we are and want to be. If children's rights are realised, if we can actually really put into practice all of the clauses in the UN Convention on the rights of the child, we will actually have a society in which everyone is happier, in which everyone achieves their potential. The way we treat children is an absolute touchstone for what sort of a society we want to be. Well, as we are looking at the whole cuts agenda and all the issues we've got in society, actually making sure that children's rights in its broadest sense are key across government. So whether that's the work programme, whether that's benefits, you know, housing, whatever, actually that the children's voices are heard and that we think children. You know, we see those signs on the motorway, think bike. Well, actually, let's make sure in everything we do in government and public policy, we think children.